Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. The long-awaited X99 chipset has finally launched and NCIX Anthony has been playing with the new processors non-stop. The current lineup consists of the Hexcore Intel Core i7-5820K and 5930Ks and the Octal Core 5960X. Today, we'll be focused on the extreme monster that is the 5960X and we'll give you well, some initial impressions so far. Being an extreme edition, we felt it deserved to be overclocked and pushed to the limits. Now, to be clear, the other two processors are also unlocked and overclockable, but I mean, come on, of course, you're gonna play with the fastest, most core one right off the bat. So if you're looking for information on the other two processors, click, ah, my elbow, click here for an overview. So basic specs, it's got eight cores, 16 threads with hyper-threading, a 20 meg level three cache, 140 watt TDP, that's a lot of heat, hence the uh, liquid cooler here. And it starts at a base clock of three gigahertz with a maximum turbo boost of 3.5 gigahertz. It comes in at over a thousand dollars, which sounds like a lot, but for the enthusiasts who are just kind of into this stuff or the professionals who genuinely need this type of power, it's actually not the worst performance per dollar argument in the world, especially if you compare it to Xeons and throw in that it's overclockable and supports DDR4 on the LGA 2011-3 socket, which is not backwards compatible with the old one. They've actually changed it a fair bit in spite of the fact that it still has the same number of pins. All right. So we threw the chip into an ASUS X99 Deluxe motherboard with a Corsair AX1500i power supply, 16 gigs of Corsair DDR4 Vengeance LPX 2800 megahertz memory, a Corsair Neutron 128 gig SSD, and a Sapphire Vapor X R9290. That's the test bench we got going here. It's running Windows 8.1 and is cooled by a SwiftTech H220X for kind of the best possible non-full custom water cooling loop type performance. Now NCIX Anthony ran two synthetic benches, Passmark Performance Test and Cinebench 15. Using stock CPU settings and no XMP profiles, this chip manages to sit at just 34 degrees idle. Under load, the hottest core just barely reaches 51 degrees. And the studio ambient temperature is about 25 degrees. So these are some pretty good numbers in spite of that 140 watt TDP. Now, speaking of the thermal design power, and let's talk power consumption. So at idle, this system pulls about 50 watts from the wall, maxing out at 150 watts during Intel burn test, which it should be noted is not stressing the graphics card. In pass mark, and NCIX Anthony achieved a score of 15,761 with their CPU mark, which places this chip fourth on the list. That's right, out of the box. This chip competes with other Okta and even DecaCore Xeons that cost up to twice as much. In Cinebench, he got a score of 1,327, also much higher than the older Ivy Bridge E chips on the 2011 socket with the X90 or 79 chipset. So finally on to overclocking. NCIX Anthony fiddled with it for a bit and managed to top out at 4.5 gigahertz, 1.3 volts. Temperatures actually stayed pretty similar at idle, but under load, it went up to 78 degrees in Intel burn test. At idle, the system pulled 110 watts at that point, reaching a peak of 265 watts under full load. So you can see that overclocking increases power consumption fairly dramatically with a chip like this, especially depending on how you adjust the voltage of the CPU. CPU mark jumps up to a staggering 19,711 points and Cinebench peaks at 1,683 points. So that's about a 25% gain in synthetic performance, which is not bad at all. Finally, Anthony ran some Battlefield 4 benches as well and compared it to the old 4790K test bench, which features 16 gigs of DDR3 memory, the same R9290 graphics card, and a 128 gig SSD. As expected, the difference wasn't much. In fact, X99 was just three FPS faster than the Z97 platform in this scenario. And realistically speaking, the performance is probably the same and the difference is just the variance that comes between one run and another run. So there you have it. Over the coming weeks, he'll be doing more testing on the X99 platform, especially in more real world scenarios, such as uh, rendering, for example. And all that's left to say though, is this is a very promising start for this generation of new technology from Intel. We can't wait to show you how it works with all the other new exciting stuff that's coming our way, especially things like PCI Express based SSDs and cool stuff like that. Thanks for watching guys. Comment below your thoughts on X99. 
Are you thinking about upgrading? If not, you can just say no. If you are thinking about upgrading, tell us what you're considering upgrading from. Are you running X79 right now? Z97, maybe something a little older, like a Z68 platform? We want to hear from you. You personally. Joe. Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe for more tech tips, just like this one from NCIX.com. Joe.